them going for more die rather than a last pixel s but we'll see lyra still actually no lyra will be picking taken up by infamous now yeah we saw the same bands as in the first game Baron banned by um by elite eight again they don't want to play against it they don't want to play it and, and so now i doubt i doubt guess will be played it will probably be bad the way in the second phase lyra is really strong i think uh, she's she's pretty much a bad pick at the moment in southeast asia which is odd because in other regions she's not seeming to be um as as a much of a priority as she's in southeast asia because she's been every game either first bad or first pick by team a they just think she's that strong. They are going to go for the Vox. Vox is quite good into Kestrel. If you can get your Vox on top of Kestrel, you can do well. You can dodge a lot of glimmer shots with that with your Sonic Zoom. The Vox will come up well. Obviously, Vox is a really good comfort pick. And yes, as I said, they should have banned Kestrel. They might not. They might ban away uh, Samuel, thinking that was what won the game. But I'd be surprised if they do. Maybe an Idris as well. They might be afraid if ever like they go for a, a, a really good dive hero here. So maybe just... Yeah, there you go. They don't want yeah, the, the, pos the possible counter on the Vox, so that's actually pretty nice. Yeah, Idris is smart. It makes sense. Uh, Idris is great against Vox, which is Idris can just counter Vox really hard, can dive on top of him. And Idris will be able to delete delete Vox very quickly. So it'll be interesting to see what they're going to ban here. They Iblis obviously don't really need to ban much away, because they, they won the last game. They don't have to ban the Celeste away. They don't have to... Um, that after bad away the comfort picks of Elite Eight. So they could uh, think about what to do because they're really not sure. And I think it make it might make sense to um, to get rid of Grace. Obviously they want to get rid of the want to get rid of the other healer, but they are gonna bad away the comfort pick Celeste. Uh, even though they even though they didn't beat to in the last game, they could beat it. They don't want to play it themselves and they don't want to give it away, even though it was a uh, it, it it didn't win the game, it was definitely a comfort pick. So I think they're just gonna pick an Arden or maybe a Batiste, maybe Batiste, but it's, we haven't seen a lot of that. So Arden's the most likely uh, captain to um, just to synergize well with Vox and not give away their composition. Yeah, I think Kestrel's still a pretty viable pickup here for for Infamous just because they also have Definitely. the Lyrus to back it up. And there it is! Yes! I'm getting my guesses right! <laughs> the same comp. The, same why, comp. Why change, why change it? If you won the last game, just change your captain. You get a probably stronger captain in most people's opinion. Lyra, is probably better than Arden. That's obviously why it was first picked. Yeah. So if you're going to let us have the comp, we're just going to go exactly the same. But Taku is a fantastic pick against Kestrel and Samuel, but not against Lyra. Lyra's by Borg is really good at countering Taka. I, I think that the fact that Infamous got the same draft in terms of carries as in the previous game, that they'll be really happy with what they did. They'll be really happy with um, yeah. how they managed to draft it. They've got the same comp. But I think Elite Eight were expecting a Kestrel, so they knew to counter it with Taku. And so Elite Eight won't be too disheartened that they let the same comp go through. They'll feel like they have a good counter. They do. Kattak is really good into both those heroes. But again, it's going to be about if Lyra can play this correctly. And if she can, then um, the attack will be in for a world of trouble. Yeah, it's all going to be up to, I believe, SNK to keep his teammates alive. Mm. The right timings with that bulwark will really help them out. And even, you know, the Arcing Passage as, passage as well, just for the immediate mobility. But Spaghetti's been really good with the active camo plays. He's been juking uh, E8 left and right on the previous game. So I'm looking to see that happen, yeah. but you still got to be careful with the Taka. Because we've seen a lot of like, really good Taka plays from last week. Mm. Yeah, Taka's one of those heroes where um, you can really make really good plays. You can dive in and either you can either go for the build where you go for... Uh, Shatter Glass Broken Myth, and you just delete whoever you dive, or you go for the Aftershock Storm Crown, where you're such an annoyance, where you don't uh, you don't kill someone immediately on your first x Retsu Kitan, but you just x Retsu and Kitan them, Kaku away, run in stealth, and uh, they can't find you, and then wait for your x Retsu up again, and then just dive in again, and just keep being that annoyance of attacker, who can constantly get in, get out, without dying, uh, and that's that's really good. Both options are really good into this comp. I'd like to see the full damage, Shattered Glass, Broken Myth. But if they're more comfortable going for the proc attacker, being an annoyance, then that 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 would work fine against this comp as well. So let's see, guys. Is it gonna be infamous for well, basically like what uh, my Omini said that you know what don't fix what's not broken, or was it is it yeah. gonna be Elite Eight with this? 
somewhat of a better comp. Like, an, unlike last game, which is they had no synergy whatsoever, but now they have good dive and uh, a really good, somewhat mid backline damage dealer with Vox. Yeah, Vox can uh, at least get a little bit of poke um, against Samuel and Kestrel. But if they're letting themselves get poked, if Elite Eight are allowing Infamous to poke, then they've pretty much already lost the team fight. Vox has such short range, and Taka has no range, so it's melee range, that a Union Spaghetti could just outpoke them so much that it's just going to be an all or nothing scenario. So SOK really has a good opportunity to get fantastic bright ball walks where he can uh, stop Taka from engaging, stop Vox from being able to get away, Sonic Zoom um, away from Malice and Verdicts and Glimmer Shots. That it's going to be pretty much all on SNK to stop Taka oh. diving in. Because I guess he can't really do anything. What's uh, what's interesting? Look, uh, Anime Saison is going to be playing on the Taka. I was expecting it was oh, going to yeah. be Official Hein, right? So, because Official Hein was is like the secondary, or rather the jungler, but and then Anime Save Me is yeah. always the captain. So this is Official, really interesting. Official Hein was the Celeste last game. Yeah. And he's decided to go for Arden this game. So he's flexing up the roles. Obviously, it didn't work out for the last game. Maybe Anime Save Me. Is just a tacker god, so we're gonna we're gonna find out. Yeah, if he's the better uh, tacker player. Get this yeah, if, if you're better on a hero, it doesn't matter what position you generally play. Play your comfort picks, play to your strengths. Yeah, all well, that's kind of interesting because since I've seen like anime save me just do really well on in on Arden last week, like he's been so good with his clutch Vanguard plays, but E8 he just doesn't even try to stop at all, but enemy saved me one, one attack away from taking down SNK, but, well, that's not okay. I won't be able to get that. SNK, SNK will be fine. Lowen <laughs> can just heal us up <laughs> quite, quite a long pull down, to be fair, in the early game, but it becomes becomes pretty pretty often in the late game. Taka just got, got that storm crap, storm crap, uh, Garth Banner, I think. Really good for jungle clear, so he'll be able to. Because Taka has one of the slowest clears of the game, but now he's yeah. picked up that Skullgar banner. It'll take jungle minions a lot quicker. He can rotate, get the get the, uh, the elder tree by himself. It's really good to try and out uh, out level beauty. And Taka is going to do that box port tome. Got a couple of items. Minion candy is on those minions, so if of course once he has time, Taka is going to rotate out to lane. That enemy saved me going aggressive, but like you said. Once SNK has his bulwark, he'll be able to use that to immediately disengage. Taka doesn't want to actually stay rooted under that because, again, with Unions getting back on their heroes that they used on the previous game, they have so much poke to work with, even on early game. Yeah, they do. Spaghetti just wait for his minions to fall down the turret. And he's going to pick them up. But Taka's going to be sneaky. Taka's going to do Taka things. Try and take some minions away. Uni wants to steal it. Nice block from Mission Official Pine. And I say if we go to the jungle. And Beauty is going to try and do the same. There was a pause. I think uh, Spaghetti was having a couple of connection issues there. So both teams do have two minutes of pause time per game. So that's a maximum of four minutes of pause time per game. And that is to sort out any connection issues that uh, the teams may have. So I'm sure they're just going to be reloading into the game, making sure they're all okay. And I think Taka, Taka is, is rotating to Yudi's backs. And Yudi is doing the same thing. But there's a scout trap in the tri bush that um, was put down by Arden, so Yudi is going to be spotted now. And so Taka knows that Yudi's going to the jungle. Yudi doesn't know. He didn't pop that scout trap. He's going to get the mid, but that's going to be Arden porting home to try and steal away the backs before Yudi can get them. So it's likely to be a fight, at least um, a poke between Arden and Yudi to see if he can, Arden can steal away some minions. But Yudi actually was really quick farm clear. He's not going to get one, he's not going to get the other. And then he's going to take it low on energy, so Yudi is not, does not want to fight now, but there's Taka. This is a bad position for Yudi, he's probably going to yeah. move it. He's going to be, well, attacked from all cylinders. He tries to pour it in their face, but I don't think E8 will let that go unpunished, and they'll be able to transition that into, uh, well, another trend here. Small victory, but a victory nonetheless. Yeah. Actually, it was a first blood as well. Yeah, that was, that's a nice about 1k goldie. Anime Save me doing really, really well at taking away Yudi's farm. Uh, Samuel is known for a really strong early game, but obviously, and he's going to flare out. He knows that is coming for him. Yudi's going to try to kill the minions. He will get one, he'll get the other. But that's good, that's all he wants. He's going to boots away. Yudi's just happy to take his farm and run away because he doesn't need anything else. If he can secure the jungle, 
and not die to Taka, he'll, he'll be happy. And Hideg is going to clear this way, probably for him himself. So we are going to see the Aftershock uh, Storm Crown build on Taka. And he's going to go for the Annoyance Taka and just try and steal as much farm away as he can and try and just get in, do a bit of damage and get out. And then he's ready for another uh, about 5 minutes. Yeah. It's basically how you play a Kosh the early game, when, where, I see it, where I've seen it before. You just go aggressive. I think Uni doesn't really have the, the power to go up against the Taka, plus with Official Hind just right behind them, chasing them down. Although, it's gonna be enemy save me to start it off. Looks aggressive onto Spaghetti, and then Angieger does go for the Sonic Zoom, but the range is not gonna be enough for him to go for a follow-up. And there's gonna be the Imperial Sigil to keep Spaghetti and SNK topped off under turret. But still, look at this, E8 are capitalizing and they are getting every jungle objective. I thought that was going to be a last from Uni, yeah. but, well, it wasn't going to be the case. The attacker just, with that Storm Crown, could take take objections really quickly, could steal farm. He's basically saying to Uni, your jungle is now my jungle. You haven't got any vision. There's no scout traps from SNK yet. Still needs to pick some up. And so attacker is free to roam about in Uni's jungle and just take, as soon as uh, Uni's farm is up, attacker can go to it. Try and steal it while well, he sees you laying down. He knows that Uni won't be in the jungle. Taka can try another rotate up to help with the gank. Taka has now got his x so that's a big power spike for him. Slightly bigger than the Oblivion from, uh, from Uni. This is going to be a fighting lane. And the damage is just going to be there. Uni going to get caught out, but look at the heal. Look at the bulwark keeping them in place. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a but E8 will be able to back away. Although, here it is. He dives in. Aggressive on the spaghetti. Oh my goodness, he survives with SNK's heal plus the active camera to dodge a couple of shots there. But, oh my goodness, look at this, anime save me isn't done at all. He's going aggressive onto Uni, but you don't want to go aggressive. Once the Dark Rift is there, once the Morales and Verdict are going to be up and available, but Uni is just that, well, he tries to go in. He, he wanted to go for the 2v1, but the gauntlet makes it easy for anime save me to get that second kill. Yeah, definitely, that Storm Crown, a lot of damage on objectives, reasonable damage on heroes, it's been nerfed a lot of times, but still, you can't just disregard that Storm Crown true damage through any defense that you might have, and UD still without a full complete damage item, he wants Shatter Glass first, it appears, and he can't afford that yet, he has to get to the jungle camp before he can pick up his first damage item, so that's a bit of a power deficit, but that's a turret gone, that's like, he can try to rush up to lay, but again, he's not quite oh, going to get really wants he... it. He actually body blocks the Glimmer Shot and EA capitalizes, gets the one. And yeah, that's not nice go for a second, yeah. Uh, that was a nice act to come as start from Kestrel's attacker, but that's not what Kestrel wanted. Kestrel really wanted to tow it. And it's on a slither of health. If the minion wave pushes into tow it, that'll be, that be falling pretty quickly. But and now EA, no Kestrel died, they want to push themselves. Attacker's really good at taking towers. SNK is here though, he's gonna be trying to hold hands with Uni to push out E8, but they still break down the turret and wow, well, there has been a lot of games wherein there have been objectives wherein you say it, one last breath would be able to take it away, Bulwark into the poke at the choke, this could be a turnaround for Infamous, but hold that thought, look at the damage coming in from Han Jaegers with that, uh, with the box, are you gonna go for a wraparound, maybe the chase down because he is very low on HP, but that's not gonna happen for now. Vanguard just for the safety. And while well, E8 are pushing this one to a 0 3 with a 2000 gold lead. Yeah, Uni now picking up his Eva Harvest first item on Samuel. That means that the reason why um, we weren't really winning those fights is obviously Spaghetti had his Sword Blade, didn't have a Tyrants. And Vox now has Sword Blade and Poison Shift. So Elite 8 were actually quite a few items ahead of Infamous, even though they're only about 2k gold ahead, it just meant that they had slightly more gold so they could actually finish their tier 3 items, whereas Infamous was still waiting to farm up to get there, so it looks like I might farm up break out, but Infamous were in a good position, uni has got his even harvest, but they don't want to fight yet, it's going to back off and that'll be a free gold by Gogo. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to build this uh, uni as sustainable as possible, with even without the Kestrel, I think you've heard stuff you said. Although E8, uh, while I was saying that, was able to get the gold miner. And Spaghetti's gonna get a cut out here. He will be able to use the active camo. Gets the stun connection, but the sideline gauntlet from official high. Look at that E8. They're gonna be able to get quite a bit of juicy targets from that Beauty. one. But 
even with the with the arcane passage nope actually with the arcane passage snk able to save uni but spaghetti was minced meat yeah the arcane passage actually trolled out uni uni went through it when he didn't want to and so it almost fell but then the same thing happened to taka taka went through the arcane passage when he didn't want to so uni managed to get away an official high base full here but taka's gonna go in Oh, look at this. Taka just slicing them up, making them into bite-sized pieces of targets. But Uni and Spaghetti will be able to escape the danger zone. But E8 with enemy saved me again on this Taka. He has been fearless in this second game. With the help from Official Heinz Vanguard, he is just becoming more and more confident to dive in and not give a care in the world. And that is just making it so difficult for Infamous to actually set anything up. Yeah, he's being that annoying attacker. Jumping in, he's not quite getting the kills. He can't, uh, he can't secure kills with the storm cloud aftershock that quickly. But he's just being annoying. He's got an up, he's got an X two up really often, and so he just goes in, Kaisen's around, Dodger, Kessler's gonna shot the box, boots it today. He wants to stop this turret falling. Box has actually got a full journey boot, so if he just gets a basic attack on an enemy, that will reset the cooldown down to 12 seconds, which is a really good for journey boots on Box. And so that turret's still not quite going to fall. Kestrel wanted the minions to get it, but not quite. <laughs> so yeah, not, so to, not today. Yeah. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> that turret will stay alive till the end of time. Or till the end of the game, too. <laughs> well, hope, hopefully, I'm hoping that turret won't stay alive until uh, for a couple more minutes. They, want, they really want to push that down. But that'll be another goal by going over to Elite 8. Infamous, they're 5k gold behind, and they're just letting Lee A ramp up this gold lead they've got. Get another gold mine, maybe get a couple of jungle farm uh, away from away from Uni. Taka's only about seven ahead uh, at the moment of Uni, which is not, not that big. And Hoodyager's only about four ahead of Kestrel, but it's all of those kills, all of those objectives. In fact, Official Hide has got three of the kills. So, uh, secured, stolen, however you want to put it. Official Hide did, did take no. those kills from the carries. In our industry, we call KS not kill steal, but kill secure. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's what it means. But here's going to be the engage once again by Elite 8. They're looking to just destroy Infamous right now. Look at the damage we're going to be saving. Hun Jaeger to set it up, but they just finalizes. This guy is a legit assassin. Man, he is going to be able to MGS his way away out of the fight. And they like to go for the chase. They're poking He's him down, but the in. safety. The bulwark is right there for the snare, but it actually gets blocked. Perfect timing there for, I believe, Official Hein and SNK. Even though he does have a lot of heals, he cannot heal enough his, his teammates from that damage ratio that just is bursting out of Elite Eight. And I may say, B tried to get the trade, but did not secure it. He's just going to get this one. He's just going to see it again. Not quite over the wall. We won't go for it. And I may say, he's just going to back off a port home. He's oh, just showing man. that he's just being that attacker. So annoying. As soon as you tried to go in with SNK, attacker went, oh, okay, I'll just expect to you, Kitan. You're almost dead. I've got a box to just boots in, secure the kill with a couple of basic attacks. And then, then you're dead, even with a Lyra heal. I've got a mortal wound by x Retsu, so that heal is now about 30% uh, weaker. So you now don't have anywhere near a stronger heal. But Lyra now picks up a contraption. It's obviously good to counter Taka, but look at the vision control coming out from Official Hide. If they fight around the jungle, Taka will just be able to stealth pretty much wherever he wants and uh, know that they are vision and so SK doesn't. SK now getting a good prep to a vision in his own jungle. Smart, you want to make sure Taka is spotted out as much as possible. And obviously, contraption giving you a much more burst heal on your Imperial Sigil. So that Imperial Sigil uh, healing scales with the amount of health Lyra has. And the amount of SA being going to pick up this, um, this Crystal Sentry. One shot, one kill. Not that much damage. Oh, SK oh. might get caught out. There's going to be another offensive dive in by enemy Same. He uses that X Retsu, but official line. Ooh, they weren't able to follow up onto the gauntlet, but still, the chase is on. E8 are looking for Spaghetti, and they take him down. Hero killed. They look for the second one. They dive under the base, and they get it. SNK will be able to heal up, but again, this is just deja vu all over again. SNK is the ones that remain, but the Lyra can't really defend against all of this by E8. And the worst thing is, one minute in, one minute more, that Kraken will be up. Unless Infamous take it, it's just going to be... Well, EA to push this to a possible game three. 
Yeah, definitely. Anime Safety showing that he can play well on the captain, but he can also play a fantastic tacker. He doesn't care about turrets, he just sees heroes and he kills them. It's the problem is that the Kestrel, weapon Kestrel, we saw in the first game how strong it is when you get ahead. If you get slightly ahead on weapon Kestrel, you can push that advantage really well. But if the spaghetti is behind, only a sword blade and a single tyrant. And actually the tyrant did fall. Oh he's no. Pick that one up. So yeah, he, we'll not no. stay till the end of time. But he's gonna probably get away. Actually, official hides 1v1 is spaghetti. Spaghetti's gonna fall. Official hide just 1v1 Kestrel. Kestrel had no energy, couldn't act to come away. And so official hide not even securing that kill, just flat out taking it. <laughs> this is even the chaos. He can secure his own kills. <laughs> Just, yeah, take him out. That's a big pass by Fataka. Aftershock, um, Storm Crown, and a full broken myth. We generally see just a piercing shard on Taka to get that uh, shield pierce. But he's now, because he's ahead, he's got a lot of farm, he's got a couple of kills. He's got a full broken myth, which is such an important uh, pass by Fataka. You can get in, get three, four broken myth stacks with that bleed, with the basic attacks, and get out, and then wait a couple of seconds, go back in with more broken myth stacks, just amplify that damage. Kestrel has no defense, Yuli only has tier 1 defense. And so, Spaghetti has got the damage where you need on Kestrel, but you need that, need that damage around 10, 11 minutes in, not 15 minutes in. That's not where you want to be on a Kestrel, you don't want to be behind. It's really hard to go get ahead on Kestrel if you are behind. Now the Kraken is being taken here by E8. I don't know, man. We've seen Infamous steal the gold biner. They have a Kestrel as well, so that one shot, one, one kill. One shot's can available. Actually... But can it really get it? Oh, SNK is the only one here. That shouldn't be. Yeah, that that one shot, one kill was too, too late. To go yeah, there was vision on it, but Vox and Taka were both body blocking anyway. They had quite quick secure, and so Kestrel tried, but it's it's really hard to, uh, to uh, get that Kraken on a weapon Kestrel, especially because that one shot. Scaling with a lot of crystal power. If you go crystal crystal, you can steal it from like so much health. And if you high one over the wall gauntlet, anime save me. He'll just get some far before he goes to uh, to dive in. There's a good vision from Lyra. So Taka can't get in and get out without being seen. But if he pops that vision while he dives in, then uh, he could get out quite quickly. And uh, he's cracking. She's walking down the lane. There's gonna be a fight breaking out soon. And Elite Eight can't let. Uh, it's just poke. They gotta go in. It looks like Bible's down. They're gonna go in now. Offensive bulwark. They'll be able to get away from the gauntlet for the meantime. But still, this Kraken is alive. Mortal wounds will be connecting onto SNK. He's gonna try some support right now. Puts down a secondary bulwark just for the safety. But look at this. The Kraken is still so healthy. Even though E8 are being chipped down slowly but surely, it's not enough chip damage that this Bane will not get popped by E8. And it will. And ladies and gentlemen, we will be going to a third game. E8 just dominating this one yeah fantastic plays from elite a really showing that they didn't need to bat away the kestrel they know how to draft they know how to counter draft against someone like kestrel they did it well they just went as attacker really annoying attacker dive in dive out and yeah there was actually uh, only one kill for uh for infamous it was almost a flawless game from elite eight um, and obviously lost that turret to, to kestrel but well played, official hide, obviously carrying the game there, 4-0 on this uh, on this Arden. And we're actually not going to be watching the third match on stream, that will be played off stream. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna, I, I believe we'll probably go to a quick...